I've decided, well, first question that I'd like to do before um, uh, starting here. Who is for the first time at a, at a talk that uh, we're giving or I'm giving? Maybe you want to, oi, that's about half of the people. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that, so I, rather than talking only about cancer, I, I'd like to run through the scientific uh, information that has accumulated over the years. We had, of course, to find a goal that we are working towards to. And uh, as you will see, we are convinced that uh, we will be able to reduce uh, the incidence, that is the frequency of heart disease, strokes, many other diseases, as we go along. And we said we'd like to have a date, a specific date, by which we think we can accomplish that. And we decided this is 2020, which means we want to be alive by that time. We're not saying, uh, you know, big product like politicians do. They say, oh, you know, next generation. Yeah. No one will hold them accountable for that. Now, at the same time, this is a big ambitious goal. It's uh, about 13 years from now. But uh, what do we mean if we say health for all by the year 2010? We are not naive. We're rather down to earth. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. Because fighting the pharmaceutical interests, the largest investment industry on this planet, as a little David like we are, for the last, uh, all together with the US, for the last 13, 14 years, you're only surviving that if you are very realistic. So that means if we talk about health for all by the year 2020, we say a drop of the following common diseases of today to under 10% of their frequency today. Heart disease, Well, heart attack and stroke, coronary artery disease is, of course, the underlying uh, problem for heart attacks. Diabetes, cancer, osteoporosis, immune deficiencies. Um, there are some other diseases that, um, that uh, we also did significant res research in, but these are things I'd like to focus on tonight. So, of course, there will be cancer in a generation from now. Of course, there will be a heart attack or a stroke, but it will not be that every second person in Amsterdam dies from heart attack or stroke. Because we've understood what the reasons are. And people have taken charge to correct that. We also come, came to understand, and I'll explain that during the talk, uh, my own role in that, that the only way how you can eliminate diseases is if you eliminate the industry that is based on the continuation of these diseases. If I go through some of my talks, there are always people who say, well, Dr. Rath, your medical things and your science is okay, but why do you have to always attack the pharmaceutical investment business? Why do you have to bring in these political things? I say, without that, everything is in vain. If you don't understand why, why you have to come here tonight and why are you not getting that on the evening news? If you don't understand that question, there will be no solution to the problem. And the answer, of course, is that the interest groups are so powerful that they also control the media, not only medicine. And this is why you have to come here and why it's so important that someone um, talks openly. So, a precondition to largely eradicate today's most common diseases is to end the pharmaceutical investment business with disease. The return on investment, Kenzie, you, you probably know this, ROI, the return on investment, which is the, the profit uh, margin of a company, uh, and therefore the existence of this entire industry depends on the continuation and expansion of diseases as market, markets for its multi-billion dollar business with patented drugs. We're coming back to that in, uh, uh, throughout the talk sometime. If we compare today and let's say we move into, year, into the year 2020, I'm convinced that many of these things have been realized. If we compare medicine today, it's pharmaceutically oriented. So who decides in this, medic, in this healthcare system? Basically, the shareholders of drug companies. 
not the people, not your health concerns. The inevitable consequence of that is that diseases are spreading because why would an investment business destroy its own markets, meaning eliminating diseases, if it's needed for making more money? And therefore, the inevitable result of this, these laws of, the, of, of, these, of this column here is that uh, diseases will continue if we do not question this, this, this motive, this, this business motive. And I'm not talking about an individual company. I'm not talking about Merck or, or um, Pfizer or Bayer. I'm talking about the principle. The principle that the healthcare system in the Netherlands, in Germany, all over Europe, in the US, in most other parts of the world is being constructed by an industry, by an investment industry that profits from the continuation of diseases. Amazing. Truly amazing. And of course, we are standing for a medicine, a form of medicine, a healthcare system where not the shareholders decide, but the people, the patients themselves, the health concerns. We, our goal is not the spreading of disease, but the prevention and the eradication. And of course, that is only possible if the economic motive is being challenged. And so, we started with ourselves. If you want to change something, you have to lead. You have to show what you mean and not just talk about it. So we have transferred all shares of our companies, which is the vitamin producing company and the, the uh, education company where we sell books, into a non-profit foundation under Dutch law. Everyone who's in this room and, and of course around the world can go to the come uh, and co and uh, check that out. It's all on the record. So I won't spend more time on that. Anyone questioning it can do that. But here's the principle. These are the people who work with us, whether it's in Germany, in Poland. Yesterday I was in Warsaw and uh, uh, talking to people and with Dr. Netzwicki. And um, the, the um, profit that is being generated from the sales of the vitamins, the things that are left over, is left with the foundation. So it is not going into my pocket. Even though the companies have my name, I'm not economically benefiting from that. And this foundation does two things with it. It's sponsoring continued research in this area because it is not being done at the pharmaceutical companies. They say they do, but they don't. We'll come to that. And the second thing is um, education or who paid the room tonight, who paid the invitations you received. It is being paid from that money that is being generated in this activity. So everything, everything you see tonight, uh, Netty, Hank, and every, every uh, consultant here uh, in the room has part of that success. This is important and has been important throughout the years for me personally. Sometimes you hear, well, you know, this is a, a David Goliath battle and you'll never win because they're so powerful. Yes, they are. They make so much profit that if you put that in euro pieces, one on top of each other, you can circle the world 30 times every year. Profit, not omset. 